hello and welcome back to the channel this is hambone here and in today's video we're going to be playing uh possibly the best tier 9 heavy tank of the game that's right we're going to be using the conqueror and i mean there's a quite a list of good heavy tanks in this game a good tier 9 heavy tanks i could go on and on and on but conqueror is one of the better ones in my opinion i'm going to tell you all about it in today's video uh see you guys in a second welcome to cliff everybody so we're playing the conqueror um on cliff here Love this tank. One of my all-time favorite tanks. Really, really enjoy playing the Conqueror. It's just a rock-solid uh, Tier 9 heavy tank. If you pull up the World of Tanks console stats websites, it actually says that this thing is perfectly balanced, which is weird. Uh, it just says that it's got like a 50% win rate, and it just says that it's perfectly balanced, which is just... It's a solid tank, and I mean, I have to agree, it's a pretty good all-rounder. There's nothing it really does great. It has good DPM, yes. It's got a good gun, yes. Uh, it's got reasonable mobility. It's not very fast, but it's reasonable. It's got good turret armor, but the whole armor's weak. It's just kind of well-rounded. You can put the Conqueror in positions where it does very, very well, but it's also going to be in positions where it does very, very poorly, as it just can't handle a lot of the heavy tank situations that other tanks would do better in. I mean, I could just think, you know, nine times out of ten, the armor of an E-75 is going to be far more reliable than the armor of the Conqueror, and the E-75 is faster, and it has more alpha damage, although it doesn't quite have the DPM the Conqueror gets, so there's trade-offs to everything. But the Conqueror is a rock-solid Tier 9 heavy tank. We've already done 800 damage here, and I like this position on Cliff. It's nice to get in here early, do some spotted, you know, um, do a little spotting once in a while if you're in the right kind of tank, and uh, just do some damage early. Put down a lot of damage on some tanks as they go across to go to the flank. Very, very good position to be in. And you see there's the Conqueror's good gun coming in. It's got like 0.3 accuracy. Very, very good accurate gun, especially with the new equipment system and the new perk system in the game, the, how they work, the new skills and perks. Very solid gun. The Conqueror's gun is very good. That, that is definitely not up for debate. It's just solid. It's got nice Hesh rounds. And overall, it's just a great gun. Great tank to be using. A very enjoyable tank to play. One of my favorites, like I said. I've already got all three of the Tier 10s researched. I just enjoy playing the tank. And so I'll take it out from time to time. Very, very accurate gun. Quick aim time, quick reload time. Just a solid all-around tank. I mean, let's think about what other options there are at Tier 9 for heavy tanks. You've got the T10, which is a really good one. Okay, you've got the Emil 2, which isn't the best. Uh, it's good, it's not the best. You've got the E75, which is another one of my favorite tanks. I love the E75. Very, very, very good tank. Uh, what else? Let's see. The M103, solid tank. Kind of fills the same role as the Conqueror. It's sort of like just a well-rounded heavy tank. Just a decent DPM, good gun, just a well-rounded heavy tank. Uh, decent mobility, good turret armor, decent, you know, hull armor. The side armor on the uh, M103, though, is very, very good. Uh, what else we got? We got the WZ-111 5A, very solid tank. I mean, just, or 5A. WZ-111 1-4, very solid tank. Not the best, but not the worst either. You got the Object 705A, also a good tank. Um, hmm. I'm at a loss here. I'm trying to think. The French Heavy Tank, the M451, not the best. It's not nearly as good as Conqueror. It's, it's just overshadowed by a lot of the other tanks. Polish Tier 9 Heavy, I don't have a lot of experience with. Same with the Italian or the Czech or Slovakian tanks. But this tank is just rock solid. We've done 2,000 damage, just rock solid DPM. Very, very good. And we can just put shot after shot very accurately. I don't think we've missed a shot other than trying to shoot through the building and failing a minute ago. I really don't think we've missed a shot this game. We're going to try and put ourselves in position to bounce this Object 705. And I think it's my best interest to track him and hold him down here, which we, of course, do. And our team's going to put shots in. We're going to try and track him one more time. And I really want to track him and put a shot in, but, of course, it doesn't work. And uh, so we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to try and go for the track or the lower plate here. We're going to punch through the lower plate, do some nice damage. And now we're just going to focus him. We got our medium tank behind him. And he's got he's going to die. There's nothing he can really do. Slap him in the back of the turret. That gets his ammo rack. And that means that with that 130 millimeter gun, he's got a long reload time. And I thought maybe we'd get that one there. He was just too angled. And this M60 has been a pain for us the whole game. I think he's pinned us at least twice, maybe three times now, which has just been annoying. He's always been in the right position to uh, do damage to us, to deal with us, which is just very annoying and uh, irritating a lot of times. But overall, not a bad, not a bad way to go. You know, we've done 3,144 damage and 1,000 spotting. 
and we've done well for our team. This position that we've taken allows us to be very, very flexible, and we can do a whole lot in just a little bit amount of time. Now, I want to push around here and try and put some damage into anything that's going to be fleeing over there because we think the Cranvon is still around. And so instead of you know worrying about it, I was going to do it, but my team's pushing through. So I'm going to go over here and try to shoot these tanks in the back. And then here comes Cranvon cruising around. I'm thinking, oh, no, what am I going to do now? You know, he's got a lot of health. He's going to be able to shoot me. So I put the building between myself and him. And I'm thinking, okay, my team will definitely do something about him. But instead of continuing to push, my team decides to go back the other way. And so now I have to deal with the Cranvon for sure. And so I'm going up here, going to help the Udez and see if we can't put some shots down. We put one solid round into him there, and the Udez is just continuing to hammer him. He's going to pull behind the hill where we're not going to be able to shoot him. The light tank and the Udez are just going to take him out. And at this point, I know he's not going to make it past that moment. There you go. He's taken out. And we are going to cruise over to try and find the two tank destroyers next to the base. There's one Chinese tank destroyer, and then, of course, the Waffle Panzer IV. And so we're going to cruise over here towards the base. There's the Chinese tank destroyer. We're going to put one there, but I think we maybe shot just a little too late or we bounced. We didn't quite get any damage there. And so we're going to pull up here and try and put one into the Waffle Panzer, and there's just not enough time. I mean, our team really did a good job that game. We really did a solid uh, solid game there. We did, what, like 40, 4,500 combined damage. Not too bad. Uh, we got second place in base experience, and... Just a very solid game and a very, very solid tank. The Conqueror is definitely one of the best Tier 9 heavies. Very, very good tank. Very enjoyable, as are the Tier 10s that it leads to. So definitely recommend going down that line if you haven't yet already. And overall, that's going to be the end of today's video. And I'll see you guys the next one where we talk about who knows what. We'll talk about something with World Tanks. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.